Today we're going to take a look at energy. Now there's two basic kinds of energy that you can have. There's potential energy, or PE, and there's kinetic energy, KE. Those are your two basic kinds of energy. The difference between them is potential energy is energy that's stored. It's energy that's not being used right now, it's stored energy as opposed to kinetic energy, which is energy in motion. Now there's a thing that's known as the law of conservation of energy. The law of conservation of energy simply states that you cannot create energy, you cannot destroy it. All you can do is convert from one form into the other. For example, you can convert potential energy into kinetic energy. How? Very easy. Stored in the chemical bonds of the elements that are found in a match. It's energy, potential energy. All it takes is a little activation energy to get the reaction started. And the potential energy that's stored in the chemical bonds is being released as kinetic energy. This kind of reaction is referred to as being exothermic, which means releasing heat. Heat stored in something, you bring it out. Burning stuff, exploding stuff, that's exothermic. Now, endothermic reactions are a little rarer in nature. In endothermic reactions, you're taking kinetic energy and converting it back into potential energy. In other words, taking energy from the surroundings and absorbing it into chemical bonds. This is how explosives are made. Explosives pack a lot of potential energy. Now, detonating an explosive is exothermic. Manufacturing the explosive, that's endothermic. Here I have a rubber band. This rubber band contains a certain amount of energy. We're going to use motion to increase that stored energy. And now we have more energy in our rubber band than we had before. We use kinetic energy to create potential energy. That's an endothermic change. Now, if we want to take that stored energy and release it, that is an exothermic change. When that stored energy is released and forms kinetic energy, energy of motion. Now, how do you measure these particular kinds of energy? Well, kinetic energy is really easy. If you want to find out how fast something is going, well, you can take like a radar gun and see how fast it's going. When it comes to molecules, though, there's so many different molecules, and they're all moving at different speeds. But if you average their speed together, you're going to get the kinetic energy of the system. Temperature is how you measure the average kinetic energy of the atoms or molecules contained within a substance. So, for example, when you stick a thermometer into a container of water, all the water molecules are going different speeds. Some of them are going faster, some of them are going slower. But the average speed that those molecules are going is the temperature. Now, if you convert potential energy into kinetic, you're going to have more kinetic, which means that the molecules are going to move faster and the average speed will increase, so the temperature will rise. Temperature is measured using several different methods. You're probably familiar with Fahrenheit. There's also the Rankine scale, which is the Fahrenheit scale dropped down to what's called absolute zero. There's the Celsius scale. Celsius scale is what's called a relative scale. It's useful if you want to find out, for example, how much the temperature changed by. But in chemistry, the absolute scale, a scale that starts at zero, is more important. We use the Kelvin scale. Notice there's no degrees here. The Kelvin scale is an absolute scale. Kelvin is just the Celsius scale that's been moved down to the point where all motion stops. What do I mean by that? Well, see, the hotter it is, the faster the molecules move. And as it gets cooler, the molecules slow down until they stop. And when you heat them up again, they move faster again. Now, there's a certain temperature in which all molecular motion stops, and that's the coldest possible temperature. It's negative 273 degrees Celsius. That's called absolute zero. And we reset the Celsius scale to zero 
and call that zero Kelvin. I'll put a little slash through here so you're not thinking I'm going, okay. Now, if you want to convert from Celsius to Kelvin, it's really easy. To convert from Celsius to Kelvin, all you need to do is add 273 to your Celsius temperature, right? Because negative 273 plus 273 is zero. And if you want to convert Kelvin into Celsius, all you have to do is subtract 273, right? Because zero minus 273 is negative 273. So that's how you measure kinetic energy of molecules. How fast are they going? On average, they're going at Kelvin temperature. And you see, the Kelvin temperature is perfect because 20 Kelvin is half as much as 40 Kelvin, which is half as much as 80 Kelvin, because the whole scale starts at zero, like everything else. Volume starts at zero, mass starts at zero, distance starts at zero. Why not speed of molecules starting at zero? Okay? On the other hand, 20 degrees Celsius is not twice as much as 10 degrees Celsius. It's just 10 degrees relatively warmer. So if you want an absolute scale, and in chemistry, all calculations will be done using the Kelvin absolute scale. Why? Because all the other things start at zero, so we need to use a unit for temperature that also starts at zero. It's a little bit harder to measure stored energy. I mean, it was pretty easy to measure the amount of energy that's been released because if I have a rubber band on here, it's got a certain amount of energy stored, all I have to do to find out how much kinetic energy it has is just release it. A pow. So in other words, if we want to find out how much potential energy is stored in something, we have to let it out. We have to release it. If I want to find out how much money I have in my wallet, I have to take the money out of my wallet. Ten bucks, that's it? Yeah. Well, at least I know now, right? I released the potential from its stored place. And that's the only way you can measure potential energy, by bringing it out and actually measuring it. Potential energy is measured using a device called a calorimeter. A calorimeter is what you use to measure potential energy. And what it is, it's a device into which you put a measured amount of water. Why water? Because water heats up at a very steady rate. 4.18 joules of energy will heat up one gram of water by one degree Celsius. And you carry out the change in that measured mass of water into which you've stuck a thermometer. Right? So you're going to measure the kinetic energy change. By knowing how much the kinetic energy changed by, we'll know how much the potential energy changed by using something called the calorimetry equation, which we'll do in a different subject. Potential energy is measured in calories. That's the standard unit of doing it. Uh, calories are kind of like what you see in your food, except those are kilocalories or thousands of calories. So if you see a cheeseburger's got 400 calories, that means 400 kilocalories, 400,000 calories. But in this class, we're not going to be measuring potential energy in calories. We're going to be measuring it using the metric unit, joule, shortened as J. So if you want to get potential energies, you have to convert it out of potential energy in order to figure out how much you have. You want to find out how much money you got in your piggy bank, you got to break open your piggy bank and release it. Whereas if you have kinetic energy, that's out in the open, that's easy to measure. So these are the two types of energy. And once again, you can't create them, you can't destroy them, all you can do is convert them from one to the other.